Hello, Biotube. Back in 2013, we had Prime Wars, starting with Combiner Wars, of course. It's actually why I didn't collect Bionicle G2. Sorry about that. Oh yeah, and there were these Prime Master guys, which were the Pretenders, where they had to market them as the Primes, because I guess Pretenders wouldn't sell otherwise. Now, thankfully, they've been confident enough to make the Pretenders, and now they're confident enough to make the Primes. Solus, Alchemist, Micronus, Alpha Trion, The Fallen, Onyx Prime, and maybe Heatwave is the core robot of Nexus Prime? Who knows? The 13 were never really a concept that interested me, but I know a lot of people have been really wanting these in Generations. So it's good here to get six or seven of them. After all, we already have Vector Prime in Legacy. We continue our apology for Prime Wars with Combiners, namely Devastator and Superion, with a hint of Bruticus. I never really cared for the Combiner characters myself, but it's been a decade since Combiner Wars and those molds haven't aged particularly well. So I'm glad those who want new versions of them are finally getting them. Although new figures in Studio Series include TF1, B127, it's good that they're keeping continuity with the Bumblebee movie. Deluxe Dev Optimus Prime, which some have speculated is the Devastation Optimus, which was just a CGI version of the Cartoon Optimus with cell shading. So I am curious how that's going to work out. It does make sense to consistently have a G1 Optimus on shelves, though. Hatches is one that we've seen before, but got delayed. TF1 Starscream, because Starscream has to be in it, of course. He'll probably have some conflict with Bumblebee. Q is finally getting a figure in the main line, so he'll be much, much easier to get. Widowmaker is a continuation of the concept art series. She was the preliminary take on Stinger. Not sure how they're going to pull that one off. We got some more for Cybertron releases with Ironhide and Autobot Soldier. When I started collecting, it was Follow Cybertron was the line at the time. And what was neat was it was just in the regular Generations line. So kind of like Gamer Edition before Gamer Edition existed. And then we have Sentinel Prime. He's pretty important to that story, so it's good that he is in that movie. And then we have Leader Class TF4 Optimus Prime. So we're finally getting a Knight Optimus. Honestly, I'd like a core class version to ride upon Grimlock, but I noticed there aren't any cores in the leaks. That's kind of odd. In fact, the only core in the entirety of these new leaks is Beast Wars Dinobot. Now, I don't know what that means. Maybe cores are getting retired, or maybe they're just taking a break from cores for a year. Either way, it definitely doesn't sound good. I'm curious if this will be the regular Beast Wars Dinobot from the cartoon or the McDonald's version. In Prime, we're getting a deluxe animated Wasp which will be a pretty cool repaint of that animated Bumblebee. We're finally getting Deluxe Venom to round out our Insecticons. Armada Red Alert to round out the cast of Autobots. R.I.D. Skybite because R.I.D. is back in business. Also not the first Skybite we've had in generations. Voyager Flatline, which I think is an IDW character. And then G1 Sure Shot, which was pushed back for whatever reason along with Dinobot. Really strange there. And finally, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Party Wagon, which is the expected crossover between Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Transformers. I don't know, will it turn into a big turtle mech? Now on to Redeco, starting with G2 Grimlock, a blue version of Studio Series Grimlock. G2 Breakdown, another part of the Generation 2 Menasaur. Armada Wheeljack, we all saw that one coming. Overcharge, what a name, it's a redeco of Blitzwing. Then we have our Mayhem Packs with a Voyager Bludgeon and Deluxe Ruckus. Chop Shop and Deluxe Barrage. Deluxe Knockout and Deluxe Windsweeper. Then we have Double Punch, which is a redeco of Scorponok. Or for Cybertron, Skywarp, and Thundercracker, of course, redecos of Starscream. And finally, the long-awaited leader, Rise of the Beast, Ape Link, which will be a redeco and retool of Optimus Primal. Then on to our package refreshes, our reissues here. We have GoBots Crasher. Always glad to see some GoBots representation. I don't see why they should be limited to some subline. We have Cosmos and Galaxy Shuttle from that same exclusive series. Which I'm glad because it was very difficult to get Cosmos. And I never saw a Galaxy Shuttle. Ramjet is another one that really needed more distribution. Tarn is a fan favorite from IDW and Cyberverse. So I can see why they would reissue him. Rise of the Beast Optimus, I can see that. Seems to be a real counter-exclusive anti-scalper push here, and also a good attempt to fix the distribution issues. Which is strange that we have Jazz and Perceptor there. I don't remember Jazz being particularly uncommon, and Perceptor was so plentiful that he went for $5 in clearance, even with an additional free figure. Shockwave and Grimlock, though, those figures really needed to be reissued. And I'm glad many people who wanted them are finally going to get a chance to get them. It was just about impossible to find a Grimlock. 
But I decided to pass on it because I have the Masterpiece version. So for me, this is my list of figures that have been leaked that I'm looking forward to. Studio Series 86 Optimus Prime is obvious. Retro Optimus, it really would be good to get an Optimus Prime that does not have any chrome whatsoever. The animation accurate deco would just be an icing on the cake. Legacy United Deluxe Optimus Prime. There's been a lot of speculation over what this Optimus is. And I think it'd be pretty cool to have a Deluxe Optimus Prime. Core Galvatron's another one. I am pretty sure it will one day be redecoed into Shattered Glass Megatron. I imagine that's why it exists in the first place. And Vector Prime, which I really need a better figure of, both to give Optimus his sword, so he can do that X-Kaiser reference, but also to add to my collection of robot leaders, played by Hayami Sho, that make little kids cry when they leave. But while Generations next year might not be interesting to me, there's always Missing Link. Missing Link is not just a bridge between modern figures and vintage figures, giving those classic designs modern articulation, but also a bridge between Masterpiece and Generations, giving us high-end affordable figures, but that's mainly because these figures are so small in the first place. Giving them added articulation can only drive up the price so much. In 2025, we are also getting a Bionicle back. Thank you all for that. And Keith is interested in doing reviews of them. Plenty of stuff to look forward to next year. Imagine being. Links below.